What was it like when you were constantly under attack? When they want to get rid of you to completely destroy your existence? One tribe could not stand it. They remained persistent in their quest for survival. They did their best, endured all the attacks and survived despite everything. They didn't let them be extinguished and erased from history. They had strong warriors who fought for survival, but they also fought for survival in history. Beginning in 1835, the US Army and its greatest generals sought to drive the Seminoles away from their Florida refuge. The vaunted generals departed the new realm vanquished one by one. Famous generals such as Winfield Scott, Zachary Taylor and Thomas Jessup were unable to match with the Seminole warriors' guerrilla warfare techniques. The Florida War ended after seven arduous years and $40 million with no capitulation or peace. To defeat around 2,000 troops, the conflict would have cost roughly a half billion dollars relative to today. The guerrilla combat, unfamiliar terrain, unclear leadership and public disfavor foretold another war in Southeast Asia 140 years later. It was the last major Indian conflict east of the Mississippi River and both sides were adamant about holding their ground. For years to come, the Creek and Seminole Indians would bear the wrath of Old Hickory Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson was known as Sharp Knife by the Seminoles and as president, he helped enact legislation in 1830 that would set fire to the Florida frontier with the Indian Removal Act of 1830. This ruled that the Seminoles, the Florida issue, would be eradicated by force. Nonetheless, a man who was neither a Seminole nor a Floridian would urge the Seminoles to remain in Florida and fight for their refuge. The name Robert Powell may not be familiar, but when he discarded his Anglo identity, he took on the moniker Osceola that would make him widely recognized for the rest of his life. Both his father, a Scots Irishman, and his mother, a full blooded Creek native, were born in northern Alabama on the Tallapoosa River. During the War of 1812, he and his family were forced to flee to Florida when Old Sharp Knife General Andrew Jackson beat the Creek Indians in the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. Since the 1750s, Creek Indians who already lived in Florida have been migrating to the north end of the peninsula. The Creeks who lived in their colony were dubbed Seminoles or Renegades by the Spanish authorities. After taking safety in North Florida, General Jackson destroyed Robert Powell's village on Lake Mikosuki, closest to modern-day Tallahassee. Historians consider this a critical loss in the First Seminole War. Powell and his own mother were on the road again, this time south, as refugees fled to the Tampa region. It was there that he matured and changed his name from Anglo to Osceola, the Black Drink Singer. His relatives gave him the name because he drank a poisonous ceremonial tree prepared from the Yapan Hoddy tree. The Seminoles of Florida were a combined group of native peoples from Alabama, Georgia and South Carolina, in excess of no more than 5,000 people. The Seminoles were at all times in the way of land-hungry pioneers searching for inexpensive land, according to the US government. Runaway African slaves from southern farms were another taboo problem facing the Seminole people. Slaves were fleeing to Florida, where Seminoles embraced them with open arms. They, like the Seminoles, had a vested interest in keeping the Americans away. Border incursions by Seminoles and Americans were blamed on a simmering cauldron of hatred. Osceola was enraged by a series of false treaties imposed on by the Seminoles. By the onset of the war, his power had expanded substantially. He would become the resistance commander and a rallying point for the Seminoles to continue to remain and continue to fight. The great war leader Osceola prepared a two-pronged opening salvo for the United States, igniting the Second Seminole War and the Florida frontier. The first was the assassination of an American Indian, Agent Wiley Thompson on the outside of Fort King in present-day Ocala, and the second was the order to ambush Major Francis Dade's brigade near Brooksville. 
All but one of Dade's brigade's 110 troops were able to survive to tell the tale. The American army invaded the Florida territory as a result of this act of war. After a series of protracted standoffs across the peninsula, the United States got desperate and adopted a more drastic tactic. General Joseph Hernandez had captured Osceola in St. Augustine in the spring of 1837 under a white truce flag. General Hernandez, a Flagler County plantation owner and captain of the Florida militia, had received direct instructions from his superior, General Thomas Jessup, in order to capture the war leader. Osceola had been surrounded and apprehended. Despite his malaria, he was paraded through the streets of St. Augustine before being imprisoned at Fort Marion. As a direct assault of the scandalous capture under a fake ceasefire, General Jessup would eventually resign his commission. Osceola was moved from Fort Marion to Fort Moultrie, South Carolina. George Catlin, a well-known Native American portrait artist, captured the wounded war chief's pictures on canvas. Osceola died at the age of 34 after three months in prison, in spite of the overwhelming support of the American people and press. Even though the Sissy and Hyatt Brown Museum of Art at Moas presently does not have a picture of the important Osceola on display, it does have an expedition that contains several extremely good Seminole paintings. The Seminole and the Everglades exhibit features portraits, genre scenes, and dramatic descriptions of life in the Everglades. The exhibit displays the Everglades' vegetation, animals, and culture, as well as the unconquered Seminoles. A drive among Indian tribes to organize themselves and form their own charter began in the late 1950s as a result of federal legislation that permitted Indian reservations to operate independently of the governments of the states in which they were located. Individuals thought that organizing as a constitutional form of government would be a beneficial step after surviving the first half of the 20th century through agriculture and selling crafts. By establishing a constitutional form of governance, the Seminole tribe increased their independence. They were able to behave more autonomously as a result of this. As a result, tribe members voted in support of the Seminole Constitution on July 21, 1957, establishing a federally recognized Seminole tribe of Florida. The Indian Claims Commission awarded the Seminole of Oklahoma and Florida a total of $12,347,500 in 1970 for land seized from them by the U.S. military. The Seminoles point to several military heroes, the most of whom are unknown to anyone outside of their culture. A. Biaka, or Sam Jones, and Imataloy, or Polly Parker, are two of the most important. A. Biaka was a medical man and military commander who commanded the resistance during the war. Imataloy was a young woman who escaped her captors when their removal vessel came to a halt in St. Mark's. She traveled back to South Florida, and several of her descendants rose to positions of tribal leadership in the decades that followed. Other notable leaders were Meganopi, Tiger Tail, Billy Bolex, and others. Many non-Seminoles believed that Osceola was the principal leader of the Seminole resistance. However, this is incorrect. Osceola was a loud warrior who was captured by the U.S. early in the Second Seminole War and died in a U.S. captivity shortly after. His detention was contentious in the United States since it occurred at a diplomatic meeting and under a truce flag. As a result of his actions, Osceola ended up being a badge of honor for white Americans who opposed the Seminole Wars, as his sad demise was a direct result of dishonorable and many argue unlawful activities by the U.S. troops. After Osceola's death, Seminole resistance to the U.S. lasted for many years. Because of their ability to withstand United States troops and keep their homelands in the very heart of South Florida, the Florida Seminoles proclaimed themselves the Unconquered Tribe. In the 1950s, the U.S. threatened to remove the Seminole reserves under a strategy known as termination. The Florida Seminoles were one of numerous tribal tribes threatened by this menace, but they were one of the few who successfully resisted it. The Florida Indians decided to form a democratic centralized tribe in exchange for keeping their self-government and reservation grounds. 
The Seminoles drafted and approved a constitution in 1957, establishing the Seminole tribe of Florida. It was led by a chairman or chairwoman, not a chief, a president who controls the board of directors, and a tribal council composed of voting delegates from its three major reservations, Hollywood, Big Cypress, and Brighton. Non-voting representation is now available on other reserves. Positions have been held for a period of four years. During the American Civil War, the Confederate government of Florida pledged assistance to prevent Seminoles from fighting on the Union side. In 1862, the Florida House of Representatives formed a committee on Indian affairs, but aside from designating a representative to engage with the Seminole tribe, failed to follow through on its pledges of assistance. Due to a lack of help, as well as an increasing number of federal troops and pro-unionists in the state, the Seminoles remained nominally neutral throughout the conflict. Secretary of War James A. Seddon got information in July 1864 that a man named A. McBride had gathered a company of 65 Seminole volunteers to fight for the Confederacy. McBride claimed to understand Florida since he had spent time there battling during the Seminole Wars. While McBride never deployed such a unit, this letter demonstrates how the Confederacy intended to utilize Seminole warriors against the Union. Other chiefs like Halleck Tostenoki and Sonok Miko, well known as Billy Bolek, refused to sign the treaty, withdrew from Florida, and joined the Union. Following the war, the U.S. government declared all past treaties with the Seminoles of Indian country null and invalid due to the disloyalty of some in allying with the Confederacy. They demanded new peace treaties, establishing conditions such as limiting tribal council power, granting freedom or tribal membership to black Seminoles at the same time that enslaved African Americans were being freed in the South, and forcing tribal land concessions for railroads and other development. Seminoles are descended from the old indigenous people of Florida, such as the Calusa, Tequesta, and Appalachee, as well as Creek and other Native American migrants from the states of Georgia and Alabama who arrived in Florida in the latter part of the 1700s and early 1800s. Thousands of these immigrants, known as Red State Creeks, joined the indigenous villages in Florida when the Creeks waged a civil war during the War of 1812. Many of these Red Sticks eventually became residents of Cow Creek, which is now part of the modern Brighton neighborhood. Outsiders routinely refer to indigenous Floridians as Seminoles, despite the fact that the group referred to themselves differently. The Seminoles of Florida refer to themselves as the Unconquered People, as they are the descendants of just 300 Indians who escaped capture by the United States Army in the course of the 19th century. More than 2,000 people reside in the state's six reserves, which are situated near Hollywood, Big Cypress, Brighton, Imokali, Fort Pierce, and Tampa. The Seminoles labor hard to achieve their economic independence. To do this goal, they have ventured into a variety of industries. Tourism and bingo earnings pay for facilities and schools on their reservation territory, while citrus groves and cattle have taken the place of the tribe's principal economic sources in the early 20th century, trading in animal hides and crafts. While growing increasingly economically diversified, the Seminoles maintain a reverence for traditional values. Some continue to live in open palm-thatched huts known as chickies, wear items of clothing that is an adaptation of ancient fashions, and celebrate the changing of seasons in the same way that their forefathers did over a two-century period ago. They also perform traditional dance and song at schools and festivals around the state, to share their heritage with non-Indians. Seminole tribes are predominantly Christian, both Protestant and Catholic. They also practice their traditional native religion, which is exhibited via the stomp dance and the green corn ceremony, both of which are done on their ceremonial grounds. Green corn ceremonies have been done by indigenous people for ages. These rites are still practiced by modern southeastern Native American tribes, such as the Seminole and Muskogee Creek. As converted Christian Seminoles created their own churches, they blended indigenous and western practices 
into a syncretic indigenous Western practice. Seminal hymns performed in the indigenous Muscogee language, for example, included essential Muscogee language phrases such as Meko, meaning chief, which conflates with Jesus. A song leader is also commonly used to lead hymns, which is a traditional indigenous singing practice. Federal projects in Florida boosted the tribe's reformation in the 1950s. To foster modernity, they established institutions inside tribal governance. Green corn ceremony attendance declined when Christian preachers began preaching on the reservation. This produced conflict between religious conservative Seminoles and those who started to embrace Christianity. Some native members on reservations, such as the Brighton Seminole Indian Reservation in Florida, saw organized Christianity as a danger to their traditions in the 1960s and 1970s. Seminole communities were increasingly concerned about the loss of language and customs by the 1980s. Many tribal members began to reenact old green corn dance traditions, and some abandoned Christian adherents. Religious tensions between green corn dance attendees and Christians, notably Baptists, had subsided by 2000. Some Seminole families follow both religions. These adherents have created a syncretic Christianity that incorporates certain tribal customs. After the Seminole War devastation, the last of the members of this proud tribe believed Florida remained the place they called home and refused to migrate to the Oklahoma reserves. The Seminoles who now reside in the Everglades are descendants from those unconquered spirits. Italwa the foundation of the Seminoles' social, political, and ceremonial structures was approximately equal to towns or bands in English. They used a matrilineal kinship system in which children are regarded to be born into their mother's family and clan, and property and hereditary functions are passed down through the maternal line. Males dominated political and social roles. Each Italwa had civil, military, and religious leaders. During the 19th century, they were self-governing, but would collaborate for mutual protection. The Italwa remained the foundation of seminal culture in Oklahoma well into the 21st century. Historically, Seminoles spoke two mutually incomprehensible Muscogean languages that are Mikasuki and its dialect Hichiti and Muscogee. Mikasuki is currently only spoken in Florida, where it had been the native language of 1600 people in 2000 largely members of the Mikosuki tribe of Indians. The Seminole Nation of Oklahoma is striving to reintroduce Creek as a primary language of politics and social discourse among its people. Some Oklahoma Seminoles and perhaps 200 elderly Florida Seminoles speak Muscogee. In 1960, the youngest native speaker was born. Today, English is the most spoken language among Oklahoma and Florida Seminoles particularly among the younger generations. The majority of Mikasuki speakers are multilingual. This is a story about real warriors, about those who never gave up in this life. They are the ones who did everything for their survival. Now, it's clear to us why they are called the Unconquered. If you like this video and want more content like this, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment on what you think about this Native American tribe. We would love to hear your opinion. Thanks for watching.